Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my workshop, uh, CQ Electronic Commerce and New Business and Repeat Business. I'm Alejandro Cordero uh, at Web Marketing Booster. We are a company based in France. I'm the business developer manager. I'm really happy. I hope you enjoy the Retail Internet Expo. Uh, so uh, to start, Secure Electronic Commerce, New Business, and Repeat Business. So just to start, in, uh, one of the main points that we want to introduce in this, on this conference plan is the benefits of uh, using predictive marketing tools, building your predictive infrastructure, why planning is a must, securing your new business and repeat business. The main reason is that eliminating the unknown, uncertainty is a huge problem facing, that is facing business leaders, whether it's over their workforce, customer retention, or products. Uncertainty has a way of causing decision paralysis. Predictive analytics is not a prophecy nor a panacea, but it does encourage agility by enabling companies to make decisions on site and not inside. Swift decisions based on data will solve a lot of business uncertainty. The main questions are the benefits of using predictive e-marketing tools. Have you ever dreamed about learning products that your customers will be the most likely to buy in advance? How great will it be if you could maximize your profits by determining the highest price that the customer will pay for a product? What if your customer optimized your customer relationship to cross-sell and upsell proactively? Do you think uh, this sort of advance Inside will allow you to make even more money than from your marketing e-commerce efforts. Predictive analytics is making a reality offering these type of solutions. Improve your core business. Predictive analytics tool help companies to manipulate data, anticipate how shoppers will behave in the future. The things they are likely to purchase, when they will buy, how much they will spend based on the past behavior. So, why is relevant to your business? Uh, improving your customer engagement. Different customers engage with retail, site in different ways. Predictive analytics helps look at all different variables to generate the desired engagement from your customer. This could mean signing up for a newsletter, clicking on a promotion, or some other form. As you can see in the, um, in the on this slide, we have an 80% of the unknown companies doesn't understand this type of information, and we have the 20% who probably is managing the predictive analytics information. So in order to promotions are must have for retail business to succeed, but it's not easy to get them right. According to this study by Oracle, 98% of fast growing merchants feel free that segmentations and targeting are important of their online merchandising strategy. Yet, more, uh, more important, customer, uh, understanding customer power strategy than half are not satisfied with the tools they have for promotions. Predictive analytics tools help companies manipulate how will behave in the future, the things they are likely to purchase, when they will buy, how much they will spend, based on pace behavior. Predictive marketing analytics can save companies money by honoring marketing efforts and eliminating campaigns that do not resonate with shoppers. Analytics can increase conversions with personalized, well-targeted marketing that turns shoppers into buyers. Customer lifecycle analytics can convert one-time purchasers into repeat customers, building greater value from existing customers. It helps to cultivate customers and define their behavior. Pathwell helping to, to the company to minimize their spending efforts, making more efficient their core business, core business I'm sorry, reducing ad spend. One of the objects is that it helps commerce merchants to stay competitive. Large commerce companies like Amazon and Netflix use predictive marketing analytics and recommendations and giants to offer customer suggestion for additional purchases. Personalized product recommendations 
can only be a certain using predictive analytics, which is very important. The data scientists are now able to generate machine learning algorithms that provide in real time personalized offers for different customers. With the introduction of affordable SaaS solution, smaller, smaller e-commerce companies can now use such tools. The biggest business problem that predictive analytics tools could help solve this eliminating the unknown, as we have spoken at the beginning of the workshop. Well, certainty is a huge problem face that the business leaders are facing right now. So the main questions, the main question, I'm sorry, why are customers leaving? If you can spot a customer at risk of leaving three months, six months, 12 months, you have time to put the strategies in place to show them how valuable they are to you. The first step is a strong relationship. Building with your customer base is to recognize them. Predictive analytics gives you clear visibility into how to recognize them. Then, the process of using predictive analytics is starting using predictive marketing. Well, historical data is 100%, as you can see, and you can understand and put everything together to understand. Once that you put in all, I'm sorry, put all the sources together, allows marketing to gather valuable insights. This translates into more sophisticated segmentation, which in turn sharpens the marketing message. As a result, conversion are more successful in terms of budget and resources, which are more focused who in the market will buy. For instance, Netflix is a well example of a streaming analytics. They capture and analyze customer interactions, including when did a customer pause, how many times did she stop the purchase, what was the color of the movie title that attracted the customer, etc., to help make recommendations in real time. Predictive analytics gives marketers a more detailed view of where their customers are and now how to focus marketing spend with a general climate of greater accountability for marketing, justifying the marketing spend and being prepared to back it up well with data has become an expectation. Companies who are using predictive analytics to focus spending are often finding that they are able to bring in more qualified leads for a less overall spend because they are able to remove a lot of guesswork. Netflix is already used above, and I don't know if using this example, which using that when the customer doesn't know what predictive analytics can take, using a different approach by building a model to support real-time pricing that uses input from various sources like very important, historical product pricing, customer activity, preference and order, history, competitor pricing, desire margins on the product available inventory. Pricing management is an ongoing process, closely to avoid automated price changes causing issues in the retailer's environment. Focus is spending on which predictive analytics takes it to the next level, minimizing the required threehold inventory for a product if the product model sees no immediate big sales. Delivering, delivering a customer experience boosts your return on investment. Tools such as marketing, automation, and forecast optimization will help. This helps the retailers to allocate their funds to buy products that have a higher demand and great profit potential. It's very important to identify the promotions that are very targeted to customers. Algorithms can predict a shopper response to a marketing communication. The impact on customer behavior and any incremental part of multiple message, these algorithms allowed marketers to choose the best campaign message for each individual and determine the best mix of marketing communications, minimizes waste of marketing dollars or pounds or euros, 
knowing the techniques and what marketing channels works best for each customer. Let's companies carefully target communications rather than randomly bombarding with prospects with emails and newsletters. With predictive analytics, marketers can determine where they advertise and how to improve email and direct email campaigns. This results in fewer waste of marketing dollars. So it's very important to understand this information. So the next step is building your predictive infrastructure. But how are we going to do that? Today, uh, we are more in a position to choose after we have all this information. Since uh, customer, we have a customer life cycle, which, which relates to the acquisition, which as you see, is identify, reach, and understand. And then we have a conversion, which deliver, defin define what and how. And the third position is loyalty, related to setting the right shopping context. Why today we are in a position to identify and reach out to our customers? To make this possible on a large scale e-marketing firms are, are putting predictive analytics skills and the attendant infrastructure to understand who their most valuable customers are. Predictive analytics factors in all possible variables that help the marketer devise the right strategy to generate the desired engagement with customers. From providing timely and accurate sales forecasting insights to equipment them with more oppor with opportunities to improve diagnosis and the design of the website to accommodate the pressures of any shopping, any e-commerce company must begin with by understanding the shopping mission, which is something that sometimes is not clear for many companies. The main objective behind this is to understand what the customers are looking for. Besides getting an idea of a customer product preference, the company tracks how the customer via search engine, banners, ads, mail, etc., reach the landing page of the, of the website. Defining what the customer is likely to buy and how it can be fast tracked through recommendations, while any leading retailer has millions of SKUs, only four to five products can be recommended to one customer. For instance, Amazon uses recommendation algorithms to personalize the online store for each customer. The store radically changes based on customer interests, which we are now speaking about personalization. The store radically changes based on customer interest, showing programming titles to a software engineer and baby theaters, for example, to a new model. So it will change according to the profile. Setting the right shopping context, for example, umbrellas could sell more in Bombay between July and August when the city receives heavy rainfalls. Other aspects of setting the right context is about using the customer's geolocalization information, reach the right product or no. So continuing with today, we are in a position. Setting the right shopping context is mandatory. Understanding consumer behavior patterns and understanding that getting too many data could take a long time to obtain a result. At the point is not to have analysis and result after you need it. The main point is not to have, however, the combination of a manual action proactive can allow you to adapt your system quicker because the algorithm will not react to huge changes outside historical data. The main point is not to be inactive, but to be proactive before the others uses this data. That's why understanding customer behavior patterns is important. Then, use of machine learning and predictive analytics. How to take the right data in the right way and apply it. Therefore, planning is one of the most important project management and time management techniques. Planning is preparing a sequence of action steps to achieve some specific goals. A plan is like a map. When following a plan, you can always see how much you have progressed towards a project goal and how far you are from your destination. Knowing where you are is essential for making good decisions on where to go or what to do next. 
Then we're talking about forecast optimization because create an infrastructure to win new customer, keep your image and maintain your customer. It's important. So in order to create this infrastructure to win the new customer, the first step is to most define the most important dates of the year, support the program is to, uh, is scheduled with historical data, define the rules and products, adapt your shelves according to the image, margin and distribution, Re respect the season, and of course, play, plan your stock, which is something that is very important. Just to give you an example, every page product category should have an infrastructure to gain and improve by 30% of sales turnover using predictive analytics. The reason is that every year that has passed means more historical data, hence more market knowledge. Building an infrastructure consists in to apply the right methodology using new input. Then tools must be capable of replicating on each page product and category using the six most important tasks, as you are seeing on the, on the screen. The most important dates of the year, define the rules and products that will dynamic, dynamically be pre in each page listing, adapt your shelves supported with behavioral product recommendation, respect decision, new products, and top rated products, and planning your stock. These six essential tasks will be scheduled in advance. Then, why we need to go to the next step, why planning is a must, which is the part three. So, it is important that all companies who are working with predictive marketing understand that it's, it's, not, a plan, it's not only a plugin. So, it, this is something that is very important to consider. It's not something that you plug in and then you continue just running the program. So, according to the research report by Ventana, only 13% of the 2,600 businesses studied consider predictive analytics a critical element of their business intelligence strategy. The point is to take the right data and the right way of thinking around it to get the best return on investment. It's a balance between performance and revenue that will allow you to have the best results. Understanding that getting too many data could take a long time to obtain a result. And the point is not to have analysis and result of after you need it. Manual action, proactive, can allow you to adopt your system quicker because an algorithm won't react to a huge change of behavior because he will know that only the criteria which are input into or breaking disrupt technology. The point is not to be inactive thanks to the marketing predictive, but to be proactive to reach and compile before the others they have the right data in order to get the best revenue. So why planning? Why planning? Uh, well, first of all, we need to define the business strategy to take the right data. The, way the, the main point, I'm sorry, is not to have the, how the combination of manual action, proactive, can allow you to adapt your system quicker. How to take the right data? The right data planning is one of the uh, Plan is like a map. When following a plan, you can always see how much you have progressed far and you are from your destination. So we are going to apply the 80 to 20 rule. I don't know if you know about the 80 to 20 rule. One more reason why you need to plan. I well established it that for unstructured activities, 80% of the effort give less than 20% of the valuable outcome. You either spend much time on deciding what to do next or you are taking many unnecessary, unfocused, and inefficient steps. Planning is also crucial for getting, for meeting your needs during the each action step with your time, money, or other resources. With careful planning, you often can see if at some point you are likely to face a problem. It's much easier to adjust your plan to avoid a smoothing or coming crisis rather than to deal with the crisis when it is. So if you see the, the screen, well, we have constraints. As you can see, there is a commercial and marketing and communication, which is starting from the business strategy. Then we have the schedule point. 
our e-business, and then we use the predictive data in order to have this marketing analytics. Then we get the report, we process that, and then we get to the business strategy. So planning to promote products that meet current objectives between B2C and B2B networks. Example, highlighting of products that create a margin of for significant communication investments. For instance, if your company contribute to different brands, your earnings could be significantly affected by brand or image and increase the, your return on investment regarding communication investments. For example, Birkenstock France promotes objectives regarding communication to cover different seasons. For example, highlights of shoes, sneakers and boots on the winter recent seasons because investment on these ranges and Birkenstock France decided to promote its partners products at the same time to keep their own products in other positions to keep its image Birkenstock is identified as a summer brand so as you see they are interested in promoting the partnership in order to to increase their margin so at the end as you can see this is a win-win strategy then why is important e-merchandising planning this is one of the important topics. When you have your eShop, so the main objective of your eShop, as you can see, it's aimed to maximizing return on investment through planning, sales, and inventory in order to increase profitability. It does that by maximizing sales potential and minimizing losses from markdowns and stock outs. For example, you have your e merchandising, check. Then you can forecast the price and continue nurturing your, your customer life cycle, nurturing your customer. Predictive capabilities business take a service to the next level and deliver a superior customer experience, pure and simple. Here is how planners can predict what the next week or next month schedule will look like and get ahead of any potential gap in coverage or capacity. Most obviously, we are talking about a financial outlay in stock, but less evidently, there is also considerably financial investment in retail space. People and corporate infrastructure, again, whilst financial investment is the most obvious type, we should not overlook the opportunity cost of the investment in time that is required by planning. We put the effort into merchandise planning in order to increase profitability Profitability is the key driver of most businesses. Effective merchandising planning delivers margin, increases directly to the bottom line. We achieve the increase in profitability by maximizing the sales potential, minimizing losses from markdowns and stockouts. There are two major areas of profit leakage in the retail. Firstly, a loss of sales resulting from lack of stock, and secondly, force margin reductions due to the excessive stock. If we can provide systems that can help us to identify and support the winners while divert, uh, diverting resources from the best losses that stuck the profit from the business, then we shall successfully win to the customer. So cross challenge our merchandising planning process, which is an average of sales of the products we put forward at the head shelves are multiplied by four. Why we're saying that? For example, if we assume that a turnover of 100 million pounds, a typically retail clothing business will lose about 15% of its turnover in markdown and perhaps 10% do the loss of sales. Then we are looking at a loss of 25 million here. Can reducing each of these figures 1%? adds to the bottom line two million pounds. Planning of the highlights of the year, such uh, as the arrival of the new collection sales, Black Friday, establish a cross-channel merchandising planning process is very important. As we can see, we can reduce uh, a lot of money. What is equally important is that this profit increase 
can be delivered in a sustained way that is merchandising planning. Planning tools also enables business to, to businesses to meet their marketing needs, planning to promote the products to meet current objectives, establish a cross-channel merchandising planning process, and save the working of other activities. As you can see, the main objective also is to scale and dispatchers can better focus on high risk tasks. Consider predictive fluctuation in traffic during the day and predictive task duration based on measuring individual efficiency. It is a systematic approach in many ways. You need to the systems to ensure that you have the right people the right process and the right compromise support. Without the pro people to processes, you will not get anywhere. The software available is merely an enable. Enable, sorry. It's aimed to at maximizing return investing, but where is this invest investment made? This is the question. You need to first win your predictive marketing plus your own product proactivity to scale your task and events in advance we allow you to boost your sales turnover rev revenue to boost and control your core business. So next, we are going to move forward to a, a use case that we prepare for you, which is the Birkenstock. The Birkenstock case, I probably you know uh, this company, and they are working with us. So why Birkenstock sees that securing your new, the new business and repeat business could be important for them, as we can, we have discussed why they are interested to 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 increase the sales turnover revenue on each page category. What is behind? What is the strategy behind? Is what we have just explained before. So, the result sales turnover 2015 with no planification. This is an example of Birkenstock in 2015. I mean, there is. Uh, they didn't have the business objectives. Well, their current business objectives at that time is B2C, B2B, and shelf Unix. Bridgestone has come with a strategy to op optimize its merchandising, of course, at the beginning of 2014. This optimization strategy focused on the three most important merchandising areas of, of the e-commerce site. And marketing communication, category page, customized product recommendations, and search engines. 60% of purchases go through the page category of Birkenstock of products, and the majority of visitors do not go beyond the top eight or 10 products. Therefore, it's essential to classify all products, pages, to optimize the conversion rate and customer experience. The implementation of the WMB algorithms on the category pages of Birkenstock France has allowed to conversion rate of 25% and the business teams to save up to eight hours per week. This algorithm is also allowed to eliminate the biases of subjectivity of the human classification and to give equal chances or to each product. A rapid consideration of the seasonality of merchandising by adapting the classification of category pages according to each product performance. The WMB tool Planning tools also enable business teams to meet their marketing needs, such as planning to promote products to meet current objectives between B2C and B2B networks. Example, the highlighting of the neon range. This is a product of Birkenstock or a category of product which has a high purchase volume and keep communication for their branding. Since they are a, ship, um, a spring summer due to the significant offline communication investments, the highlight of shoes, sneakers, and boosts on the winter season because of investment on this range, and Birkenstock France decided to know this product. Birkenstock, on average sale, I'm sorry, of the, of the products, put forward at the end of the, of the shelf units, are, as I said, are multiplied by four. Planning the critical highlight of the year, for instance, the arrival of the new collection sales of Black Friday, it's very important. So, top of the funnel, we, we are defining this as the awareness. Establish an infrastructure linked to your merchandising. 
planning will save typical content includes newsletter, customer, press releases, and social ads. Business perception, improve the visibility and Birkenstock image of their products online, image description as a summer brand. However, they need to approach the new market with new tendencies and re rely on customers to increase their sales revenue. Online requirements and business actions exclude products not available in the stock, also from past collection, products and all season. So they renew all c the cycle is every six months. The summer season period, private sales to loyal customers. The top of the funnel represents the most basic stage and many prospects never move beyond this point. Typically, content includes newsletter, customer reviews, press releases, and social ads. As soon as someone opens an email or click an email personalized product recommendation, he or she is automatically entered into your client marketing automation. Sales cycle, along with their content information and preference for new content products and whatever else you have listed onto the newsletter and email. So middle of the funnel, which is we call it engagement. Keep converting your existing customers should be part of your infrastructure and planning. To nurture a marketing campaign, workflow and triggers will you to spend less time. Establishing a workflow process that will grade your customer life cycle. This is done by assigning tri triggers to each piece of content you produce that are validated to your customers. The idea behind lead scoring or working with workflow process marketing automation is to improve the quality of the leads that move through your funnel. Companies that do not have any way of grading their leads often have a high conversion rate in the prospect to lead stage, but dismal conversion rates in the lead to customer stage. Lots of content of personalized products, but in quality and priority. The key to having a strong sales network funnel is to provide lots of content or personalized products, both in quality and priority. Plan marketing campaigns to different customer segments. For example, men uh, which are between 20 and 30 years, 35 years old, or between 35th and 50, this is a critical because the two, the two main patterns are completely different. So the customer segments will react differently to our brand image and new products. So, however, they need to approach the new market with new tendencies and rely on customers to increase the sales revenue. For example, you will establish a workflow process that will grade your customer and life cycle. This is done by assigning triggers to each piece of content. As soon as someone opens an email or click an email personalized, email, sorry, a product recommendation, he or she is automatically entered into your client marketing automation sales cycle along with his contact information and preference for new content or products and what, uh, whatever else you have listed on the, web, on the newsletter or email is to improve the quality of leads that move through, the, through your funnel. Companies that do not have any way of grading their leads often have high conversion rate. Return of investment focus on, focusing on dynamic content and triggers to follow up your customers' modeling workflow will make it impossible for you to keep in touch with more customers for long amount of time, for a longer amount of time, increasing the chances of a conversion down the road by 20% on products pages and maximizing your chances to increase your page categories to 30% sales revenue due to repeat business. So we are now moving forward to the intermi intermediary of the funnel. On the flip side, understocking is just as bad. On that end, while you f feel free up capital because it's a stock over there, you cannot move it. You run the risk of losing sales, do not having anything to sell. This can also hurt, hurt your reputation. If you bought something from a store and they refunded your order without warning and told you they ran out, what would you do? If I'd, you would like somewhere else, allow you to organize promotional events 
organize and planify new commercial events to clear over your stock, to organize your promotional business plan, allow you to anticipate product shipping and, and gain market share against competitors, to organize your e-merchandising, health shelf, and link to all your e-business action step by step in order to maximize your business, reduce stock cost, target your e-marketing expense on product which represent 80% of, of your turnover. For example, you, you probably will sell in summer, in August or September and October, some sandals, but probably you will go to sell boots in the case of Birkenstock in the winter. So you need to planify the stock as the example is showing. And then moving on with the collection of the different, as you can see at the, uh, at the end, according to the brand or the partnership that you have with your distributors. Many companies say that they want to optimize inventory, but uh, in order to reduce in forecast error, the two key factors that will impact the amount of inventory that is required in a supply chain are lead times and demand uncertainty. uncertainty. Although forecast will allow always be wrong, there is a great deal that can be done to, s to increase the accuracy with improvements in process and technology. Remember, you have to do everything possible to be least, less wrong. Forecast and consensus demand, for example, aggregation and agreement on one forecast uh, number by all departments are also used to determine the forecast error. So if a company does not have a strong process in place to facilitate collaboration, they will not be able to do well in any of the other areas. Demand planning is critical. It's a critical component on inventory management. We, we, we have a new e-paper on this topic entitled Planning Demand Profit Driving Supply Chain. Inventory management, even with a perfect plan, a company cannot keep inventory low and customer, server high, customer service high unless they can execute on moving inventory through the supply chain to meet customer orders. Common obstacles to inventory management. So what are the biggest headaches for all the e-commerce the e store owners when it comes to inventory? Well, other than the fact that the inventory is a headache in and on itself, you have probably dealt with some of the following. Overstocking and understocking. On like Christmas stocking, you don't, you don't want your store to be overstock because overstocking means you have precious capital tied up. I mean, it means that you have less budget for marketing and running your store. You also risk having products you will never be able to sell. You never know when the demand is going to, to suddenly dry up, leaving your wheat a bunch of useless information. So that's why holistic approach to arrive at the final of the funnel. Keep in touch with more customers for a longer amount of time, increasing the chances of conversion. Maintaining your customers for a long period of time makes personalization important. Nonetheless, to secure your repeat business and new business, it is critical historical analysis. It's not enough predictive uh, to help to, to your stock, I'm sorry, to be secure to respond to different factors like weather or external factors. So you need to move to attract, nurture, prioritize, and sell at the end of the funnel. You has come up with a strategy to optimize merchandising. So it means holistic approach is a process to manage your competitor's analysis, define your price margin by product category, starting again, have head shelves process in advance will allow you to respect your image, partners, communication to gain that percentage sales revenue to increase your market share partnerships. New customers, the infrastructure to keep a long communication with marketing automation will boost the loyalty of your customers, reducing by four times, as we have said before, have you have seen before, the invest on ads. So that's why Birkenstock is focusing on planification, using e-merchandising, marketing automation, and forecast optimization. 
Also, uh, that we feel increasing your turnover revenue every year with planned rules to guide predictive marketing. So as you can see, Birkenstock work on these four areas using planning to secure the repeat business. So now they enter to the results in 2016. The results in 2016, as you can see, well, they, they made up. The purchases go through the page category uh, was from 10% in the last year, and in 2016, they made 30%. So it means also the average order value increases by 11%, and the conversion rate, too, by plus 29%. Teams save up to eight hours per week. Customer loyalty went from 10% to 26%, and return of investment from 25% went to 43 percent. In order to, to show you an example of why we need to be proactive, let me just move there. For example, this is a process that I would like to share with you. The objective to work in marketing automation is that you can always create a workflow. This workflow, as I was showing on the, on the, in the speech, will allow you to qualify the funnel of your customer. For instance, you can start def defining who is your customer or the segmentation of customers that you would like to, to target. Again, we're speaking about that you know your customers. Then you probably would like to define the timing. For example, if you are working with your abandoned cart campaign and someone or your segment of customers leave the abandoned cart on on, the, on, on, on your website, probably you want to follow them and nurture them and find the decision maker. So you define the timing. So after a client leaves the abandoned card, you define, for example, 30 minutes later, they abandon, to send an email with some information about your company. So this is the first level of qualification. What is really important about marketing automation is that when you are planning your strategy, you are at the same time thinking about your stock and the next step with your customer. So the action, intermediary action, means that if your customer answers the email or interacts with the email or the product or the material you send to your, email, to your customer, if it's negative, you send it to another process. If it's positive, you can probably work on a product recommendation or an SMS campaign or pop-ups or a customer review. So you can go as long as you want to continue nurture your customer. If we see an example here, let me go there. So you can, you can create, you can planify many, uh, your product recommendations. Okay, let me just go there. Okay. Mm. Let's see an example. Let's see how it works. So now I'm thinking about planning. So when we are planning, probably we have a, my campaign of mark on my abandoned cart, but I want to, to go to the second level of the funnel, as I was explaining in my, uh, before. For example, I go to my email templates, and probably I, I decide, oh, it seems that it's not going there. OK, so I have my library of, of newsletters. But probably, uh, I know that there are many tools that works on, on sending newsletters. But what is important is when you qualify your customer or you in your marketing automation tool, you qualify this customer. You can create custom uh, product recommendations, but will be personalized to your customer. So it means you will in include it here on your newsletter. So this is part of your planning. And if I move on, after you kept your customer, probably, let me show you this video, you will not to, would like to update your, your, your merchandising. So I'm sorry, let me just turn on the, the music. I'll, So let me explain you this example, which is part of our tool. So this is Birkenstock again. We are selecting a page category. So what 
category you would like to optimize. So you can go to your account, connect it. Now we're talking about planning. So as the business manager, probably you would like to find the page category you would like to optimize. And probably you create a first campaign to do this planning by clicking but in this tool you can create this campaign name it and which is very important which now we're speaking about planification that you can select the date in the future that probably you would like to put in place this marketing campaign what is the objective I mean what technology would like to put in place I mean it could be by conversion by sell by margin etc the technology probably will optimize so many tools in the market will optimize the 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 page category but what happens when you want to create rules rules that probably are defined by price probably you would like to have your price um, to, to put in front products that are, has a price uh, more than a value that you want to put in place so you save it and now probably you will have uh, some of your products that are correctly put in front but what happened if you as an ease business manager you want to drag and drop products probably you want to just move in and the something as we spoke could be convenient to your marketing strategy uh, well as you see in this example you probably want to move at the front some other products to the uh, to an, another position so as you see it's easy you can planify this campaign to which you can be proactive and well thank you so much for your time i'm alejandro we are at the stand e5 so if you have further questions i will be happy to answer them thank you so much have a, enjoy the event thank you